So to be clear, what do I mean by a measure of central tendency? It's just a measure or a summary statistic that describes the middle point or is representative of the middle point of a distribution. So it should be representative of the distribution as a whole. Of course, we can't describe the whole distribution with one number, right? This is just what statisticians call a point estimate. Uh, but it should do a pretty good job. It should be representative. The most common examples of measures of central tendency in statistics are the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean we saw is just sum up all the scores, divide by the number of scores. It's the mean or the average. The median is just the middle score in a distribution. So if I just lined up all of the rankings, all of the ratings on the wines from the highest ranking to the lowest ranking and just plucked out the middle ranking, say the 50th ranking out of the 100, that would be my median uh, ranking. And the mode is easy. That's just the score that occurs most often in the distribution. And if now that you've seen histograms and know how to plot histograms, it's real easy to see. Just look for the peak of the histogram. That's the mode. So the mean or the average is by far the most common measure of central tendency used in, in statistics. It's the one we're going to rely on the most in this course. Uh, in any intro stats course, that's the one that you're going to rely on the most. Um, so for example, uh, the red, red wine ratings. Another classic example is just your grade point average. And those are the, the mean is the best when you have a normal distribution. If you don't have a normal distribution, in particular, if you have a distribution with really extreme scores, so an extreme positive skew or an extreme negative skew, then you might rather go with the median rather than the mean. And that's because those few extreme scores can really bias the mean, whereas the median, if you just line the scores up and take the middle one, those extreme scores are not going to bias the median as much as they're going to bias the mean. So we can look at the white wine ratings as an example of that, but those weren't that skewed. So we'll look at them so you won't see a big difference between the mean and median. You'll see a slight difference. Uh, another example is a classic example right now in, in the U.S. and in lots of uh, modern countries right now is household income. So household income, particularly in the U.S. right now, uh, particularly in Brazil right now, um, is really not normally distributed. So there's a real positive skew in, in the uh, income distributions in the U.S. and in other countries as well. And we'll take a look at that as well. So you'll often see reported in the news or if you're reading stuff on the internet, you'll often hear median salary or median household income reported rather than mean salary or average salary or average household income. And that's because those distributions are skewed. Here's a more detailed graphic. Uh, again, this one I just took off the internet. This is a histogram of household income in the United States. It shows this really extremely positively skewed distribution. Okay, here you're going to see a large difference between measures of central tendency like the mean, the median, and the mode. Okay, so if I just took the average of all of these incomes, we're going to have to average in these extremely high incomes way up here which are, you know, this isn't even that high. The graph actually extends way beyond that to include people like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and so on, uh, right? If I include their salaries in the mean, the mean is really going to be inflated. In contrast, if I just take the median, the middle score, that's gonna be right here. No matter whether I include Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, people like that in my distribution or not, uh, the median is still going to fall right here. It's at about $49,445. Uh, and if you look at this, the mode is actually right about here. Um, that's way down between like, say, 15 and 20,000. Okay, so when you have this extremely skewed distribution like this, 
like U.S. household income right now over the last few years in particular, you're going to get a real difference between the mean, the median, and the mode. Because it's hard to find a measure of central tendency that's representative of the entire group, right? That's part of the problem. Uh, I'm not going to get into a political discussion about this. Um, it's just a good example uh, to illustrate a non-normal distribution and how measures of central tendency can really differ when you have non-normal distributions. If it was perfectly normal, then the mean and the median and the mode would be just about the same. So finally, the mode is just the peak of a histogram. It's just the score that occurs most often. So um, the Argentina white wine distribution, that was a real easy one to look at the peak. Remember, because it was, it was leptocurtic. Um, it had that really strong peak. If you look back at the graph, it was right around 70 to 72. It was also about the average um, because it didn't have really extreme rankings on the negative end or on the positive end. Um, a thing about the mode is it can also be applied to nominal variables. That's not true of the mean or the median, right? But we can apply it to uh, nominal variables. So what I did for fun is I just took these countries that we've been playing with, um, the US, France, Argentina, Australia, and I just said, well, in the last year, what are the most common or what are the modal baby names? Uh, these really surprised me. Um, I don't know if my source is accurate. Um, but in the, in the U.S., the most common female baby name in the last year is Sophia. Most common male name, James. Um, in France, it's Emma and Nathan. In Argentina, it's Sophia and Juan. And in Australia, it's Charlotte and Oliver. Those are the modal baby names. They're the ones that occur most often. It's only the mode that we can apply to nominal variables. We can't apply the average, for example, to nominal variables or the median to nominal variables.